Hey everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome back to another canal cholesteatoma case. Now we uploaded a canal cholesteatoma a couple of months ago and that was a really, really good one. There was lots of bone erosion and swelling and um, some granulation hiding in there. And since then we've been inundated with requests and emails to show another case. So, and here we are. So this lady came in uh, last week, very clean history, um, not diabetic, not elderly, um, no ENT history, uh, blood sugar levels checked recently and confirmed. Um, so this seems to be just sort of out of the blue. Um, there's no rhyme or reason behind it. And what we see here is a nice little sort of trench or depression in the ear canal, and that little sort of yellow nugget there is a piece of sequestra or, or bone, basically. It is a piece of bone. And um, what I'm going to do here is I've got the uh, metal hook and what I'm doing here is having a feel of it. And a, a lot of people are, are, have questioned, how do, how do you know when you come across one? And it, it's difficult because you never really, like keratosis obdurans, you never really know that you're dealing with it until you're in the midst of it and halfway through digging it out. But um, what I'm doing, I didn't intend to take a sample here, but we will put this sample underneath the microscope at the end so I can prove to you it's sequestra. But uh, what I'm really doing is having a feel of it, and that is, I would suggest, quite a good diagnostic thing to do because what you're feeling for is that classic spoon on brick uh, tactile sensation that you get in your hand when you're scraping against bone. It's very different, and if you ever do come across it, you will know instantly when you feel it because it is very, very hard. It's, it's unmistakable. I'm pretty sure I just sucked up a little bit of sequestra there as well. But we have further erosion uh, up here and there's exposed bone, which you'll see later on become clearer. Um, so there's not just erosion in the pocket. Um, there's erosion up top as well, and I'm not entirely sure why. I'm assuming that... Um, the, the, the sort of bacteria that, that's kind of living in the ear canal and, and, and feeding on the dead skin and living quite happily in the pocket are releasing enzymes or um, that, that lice or, or break apart proteins. Um, and that's why we're seeing erosion or the skin deteriorate to the point where there's exposed bone. So uh, now if you're wondering, you're probably thinking at this point, well, hang on a minute, aren't canal cholesteatomas supposed to be huge collections of dead skin? Um, similar to middle ear cholesteatomas, but, but rarer. The reason that this one looks nice and neat is because most of the heavy lifting has been done for me the day earlier. So this patient came into clinic. This is a 30 degree endoscope, by the way. So uh, a zero degree is what we're all used to seeing. You know, that looks forward. But a 30 degree endoscope looks up by 30 degrees. So what I've done is I've, I've basically kind of got it upside down. And... I'm looking down into the ear canal. So well, although the rod is straight, it's giving me a downward view. So you can see I'm kind of above the ear canal now. It's kind of weird, isn't it? But what I'm doing, uh, what I was doing there was looking inside that first pocket to make sure that I haven't missed anything. And you would be very, very surprised at how deceptive these can be. So the, the trench or depression can look clean, but actually if, you, if you're brave enough and you kind of dig your, your zolna in, you will find that there's just huge amounts of material and slough and muck that actually suction up from what is quite a deep trench. Um, and something that I, that I have missed before, but an ENT has picked up on, is I found the canal cholesteatoma, but there was granulation hiding all over the shop, but I didn't see it because it was hiding in the trench. So now I'm, I'm doubly careful to make sure that I look with the 30 degree and, and clear out as necessary. Um, and if anybody's wanting a 30 degree endoscope, by all means get one. They're not that expensive. They're no more expensive than a zero degree endoscope, but they are, they are very useful for imaging. Um, so uh, what we're going to do here is um, clear away as best we can. I'm going to just spend a little bit more time up in that part of the erosion there. You can just about see that little bit of bone. It looks kind of golden, doesn't it? Um, and again, it has that same feeling. Um, I don't want to cause any bleeding here but what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that there's nothing else going to come away here and there's not a second pocket or, or, or of, um, of keratin hiding there because what we do in these instances is once we've cleaned it out as best we can and we've, we've, we've gone as far as we can we take video and several images and we often send that uh, to our to our ENT doctors that we work with and then they will they will 
depending on the severity rushed to the patient. Um, but that, um, this patient is now in line for a meatoplasty, probably. I'll explain what that is in a moment. Piece of bone here on the slide. Um, I've immersed it in potassium hydroxide, which is K or KOH. K is the chemical symbol for potassium and OH is the hydroxyl group. Uh, similar thing to what I did on the last video. So the, this chemical, which is to some degree dangerous, so you perhaps should not attempt this at home because it, it can blind you if it gets in your eyes, but what it, in high concentrations, but it will lyse or basically dissolve human tissue or skin, I should say. Um, so the idea normally is that this would be done in a lab if a doctor thinks that uh, a patient has a fungal infection. So they'll take some skin scrapings or whatever, and then the uh, biomedical scientist will put it on the slide, douse it in potassium hydroxide, wash it away, and then the, uh, the fungal cells will be left intact. In the same way, um, if I leave the potassium hydroxide on the slide for long enough, it will get rid of all the human tissue, but it will leave the bone behind, if it is in fact bone. So here it is after three days. So for three days, I kept my eye on it. I topped it up occasionally and the bone is just kind of happily sitting there. The reason that it looks all glassy is because the potassium hydroxide is now dried and crystallized. So it's quite pretty actually. Um, I'll wash that away with water. But uh, this patient, so uh, I sent through the images and the ENT saw the patient uh, a couple of days later and possibly will be in line for a meatoplasty. What I think the surgeon is going to do is, is basically drill everything flat, right? So the inner two thirds of the ear canal are thin skin on bone, but it shouldn't be trenchy. It should be relatively smooth. Um, so he's going to drill everything away, smooth it out, and then potentially lay some fascia over it, which is muscle lining. I'm not entirely sure what he's going to do, but um, if I can watch that operation uh, I, I will do and I'll let you know what, what goes on. So there we go, this is just sped up footage. I just rinsed the slide clean with water um, so we could see everything a bit clearer. But that was a very interesting case. I hope you found that interesting. If you have any further questions, uh, leave, them down, leave them down in the comments section below and I'll try my very best to get back to you. Um, just before I go, one of the main questions was, um, do you have any tips on how to spot them? And really the best tip I can give you is, Lils and I tend to be extremely suspicious now of anything pockety, trenchy, recessy, anything uh, where debris can collect. Lils and I immediately try our best to clear it out and, and that's uh, how, we, how we tend to catch them. And we've caught five in the last year, which is incredibly unusual given the incidence is about five to 20 in 100,000. So best tip is be vigilant. And if you see anything that uh, looks suspicious, clear it out. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys on the next video.